By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in this episode, I am playing against Drew Epstein from the United States, and we are playing Eternal Central Rules. And that means that we can play with Fallen Empire and Four Strip Mine. And if you'd like to know more about the rules, you can check the description below. There's a link to a rules video, which is a little bit outdated, but there I explain the differences between Swedish and Eternal Central. And I am playing with a counter burn deck. Um, did I mention that uh, Drew is playing with a Ponza Disco deck, by the way? So Ponza Disco refers to, uh, you know, Ponza, the land destruction strategy and Troll Disco, the Nevenerals disc and the Setch Troll. Now, if you'd like to know more about these di these two decks, stick around because I'm going to do a little deck tech. If you'd like to go straight to the games themselves, no worries. Check the timestamp below, click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to game number one. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. I am playing with a counter burn deck and I am playing definitely the more controlling variation of counter burn. You can also play this with flying man and even black vice when you want to play the more aggressive type. So this is more the controlling type. And one thing that I'd like to mention because we are playing EC today, this is actually the picture of my uh, Swedish version. So the EC version includes three more strip mine because I'm just playing with four strip mine as well, which I think is important in a counter burn strategy. So I believe I've taken out uh, two control magics and I believe the Sheevan. So I'm just playing without the beautiful Sheevan dragon, a little bit more business-like. Um, so yeah, that is my deck. And as you probably know, you know, counter burn is a well-known uh, strategy in old school magic. The goal here is just to counter things away of my opponent and just play a lot of instants and a lot of burn. So kill my opponent mainly with burn and in between maybe deal some combat damage using the Surrender Befreed and of course the Mishra's Factories because there's a full play set of Mishra's Factories in here and I'm hoping to get a lot of value out of my Energy Flux, out of my Blood Moon, making it really difficult for my opponent to kind of play his game and uh, from that control position, I can take the victory, I hope. So this is my counter burn deck. Let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, Drew. Drew Epstein is bringing a Ponza Disco deck to the table. And uh, actually, Drew, if you're watching this video, leave a comment. Please let me know how you would like me to name this deck because I just made up this name for this video. Well, I made it up for a reason. There's an idea behind it because you're combining two strategies. He is combining the Ponza strategy, strategy, which is get rid of all the lands of my opponent. And when he has no lands, I will probably win the game because he cannot play anything. So that's a pretty solid strategy. That means he's playing with Stone Rain, Sinkhole and Ice Storm. But he's also playing with four strip mine because we are playing Eternal Central. So this could be absolutely brutal. And I wonder if I can even get two blue mana open to play my counter spells. I really, when I'm looking at this deck, I'm like, uh oh, maybe not. And he's also playing with Birds of Paradise for some ramping. So he could get this land destruction going in turn two already. And when he finds the right mox, and even in turn one. So this could be. This could be pretty devastating. He's also playing with a troll disco element. He's playing with Nevernoral's discs so he can blow everything up and also with the Satch troll that he can regenerate. So all, overall, it looks like a very, very strong deck. And what I really like about Drew's idea here is that he's combined two top tier decks together to make a new deck. And I think it's an interesting way of looking at the meta and think, okay, what decks work well and are compatible with each other? To make together like a super brew like 2.0 version now if you'd like to know more about this deck edwin the magic engineer made a really interesting video about it so there's an info card appearing right now you can click on that card and it'll take you to that specific movie or you can watch that movie after you've watched this match because the match is actually pretty cool as a matter of fact talking about the match let's go to game number one Game number one, and Drew is sitting on the left, and I am sitting on the right. So, going to play against this uh, this Ponza deck, this Ponza Disco deck. Uh, it's it's I I just got a feeling it's going to be tough. I'm playing with my Counter Burn deck, and it looks like Drew uh, won the die roll, so he gets to start. And let's see, pretty cool play mat, by the way. And uh, let's see what he can do, starting with the Bayou into a scavenger folk pretty good start here oh and there's a black lotus as well so already three cards there on the battlefield three permanents let's see what i can do here playing a mox ruby into a lightning bolt 
making sure that the scavenger folk uh, doesn't get the uh, that he doesn't have the ability to start destroying my artifacts here look at that basic island into a soul ring this is a pretty good start and let's see let's see if drew can do some land destruction <laughs> and yes he can there is the first strip mine out of four taking care of my basic island and playing that birds of paradise let's see if i have another lightning bolt to bolt the birds And can I find another island or at least a land here? Okay, playing a library of Alexandria, but my hand is already pretty empty, I feel, after that Mox Ruby, Lightning Bolt, Soul Ring, and Basic Island on turn one. But let's see, maybe it sticks. There is an Ancestral Recall here by Drew. He gets to draw three new cards. I'm sure he has some land removal here for the library of Alexandria, but the question is, does he want to get rid of it or not? Maybe that's why I played it out, hoping that he's going to use his land removal on this one. And that's exactly what he does, playing a sinkhole, cracking his Black Lotus for a Surrender Perfreet 3-4 flyer. Can I find my own Surrender Perfreet with my City of Brass? It looks like I can, because I'm just passing turn here. So Drew is taking a damage. It's a little bit hard to see his life total. And he's on 19 at the moment. And I'm resp oh another strip mine stripping my city, responding with a side blast over his surrender perfreed. That does mean that I take two damage and damage from the city, so I'm going to 17 here. And of course I'm losing another land, so he's already taken care of three of my lands. And the question is, can I keep playing lands out here? And this is hard finding a Mishra's factory passing turn. And there comes a Volcanic Island, tapping for four into a Nevenerals Disc. And remember, I only have Energy Fluxes to deal with artifacts. I think in this case, maybe a Shatter would make more sense. So maybe after sideboarding, I can board in some Shatters. And attacking here for two at least. That means that he's going to 17. Playing a Volcanic Island. Having blue mana now again, and of course red with this dual end. Let's see what I can do. And just looking at my hand, am I just going to pass turn here? I already said in the introduction, I think it's going to be really difficult for me to... Uh, oh, look at this. I'm going to play something here, and there is that energy flux. In all honesty, I mean, it's also going to work against me. I mean, I know what I want to do here. I want to force Drew to use that disc but don't for, remember i have a soul ring the soul ring can pay for itself but i also have a mox ruby so i guess it's going to cost me one uh, mana source every turn one land's going to have to stay tapped now let's see what drew is going to do here first going to draw a card maybe he forgot he's not oh another strip mine oh he's of course he's paying for his energy flux he's paying for his never disc another strip mine I mean, this is a huge problem. And now I have to pay for my um, artifacts. And I think this energy flux is more of a problem for me than it is for my opponent, Drew. And of course, if I would have known that he would find another strip mine there, uh, I wouldn't have played out the energy flux. But I think, in all honesty, I just don't think it was a good play to play the energy flux. Let me know what you think. There's another Stone Rain, gonna lose another land here. And this is exactly what Drew wants to do. He wants to get rid of my, my lands and he's doing a really good job at that. Even having his Nevenerals disc more or, or less as a backup here, so I'm passing turn. Is he not paying for the energy flux? Okay, he is, okay. So he is paying for playing three, playing a Setch Troll. So now he has that Setch Troll Nevenerals Disc combo going. And can I maybe play a Lightning Bolt? Because he doesn't have any mana to regenerate it now. And I do have that rat mana open. It looks like he's asking how many cards I have. I have two cards in hand. And Drew is in a very controlling position right now. I mean, I need to find... Maybe I can find a chain as well, playing with four chain lightnings. And... Seem to be in the tank somehow. It's my turn. Paying again for the energy flux. Finding a basic island. 
And I mean, that energy flux is really, really holding me down right now. And it's not helping. So unable to take care of that Sedge Troll. So he's probably going to swing in for three here, bringing me down to 14. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So I'm going to 14. The question is, does he want to play, for example, an Ice Storm that he stepped out, taking that risk that I can destroy, possibly can destroy a Sedge Troll. Looks like he's not. I'm going to untap. Am I going to do something different? And no, I just decided to pay as usual. I was probably just thinking about my options of maybe sacrificing one of my artifacts, for example, using my soul ring to pay for itself and sacrificing my ruby and using it to pump my, uh, my factory. But deciding not to do it, just passing turn here, and I'm a little bit stuck, which is not great, because I have the set troll to deal with, going to 11 here. And there's another strip mine. So is that strip mine number three? Meaning I'm losing my basic island. And I'm just keeping everything tapped, finding a strip mine myself, but that's not really gonna help me here. I guess it can take care of one of the sources that has a black mana because then it's harder for the Setch Troll to regenerate. But remember, he also has that Birds of Paradise. He has that Underground Sea. So, I mean, even if I take care of the Bayou, he can still regenerate it. And in response, he can even give it a Regeneration Shield. And here we see a Badlands making matters even worse for me here. Attacking for three again, going to eight. And I think, I mean, in hindsight, I really shouldn't have played out that Energy Flux. It's really, it's really a pain in the neck for me. And paying for it now, playing, uh, choosing to use my strip mine just as a way to pay for my artifacts. Playing a volcanic island, not finding anything. I need like a surrender perfreet, for example, just to stop that set troll. I mean, one damage from a surrender perfreet is better than three damage from the set troll. But I'm really light on cards as well, and just having two in hand, it seems passing turn here. And I'm, I mean, I am slowly dying, so I mean, I have to do something. And Drew is still on 17 life. And he's going to swing and go into 5 here. And th it looks like things are going exactly the way they're supposed to go. Passing turn here, paying for my artifacts again. I mean, I have found a lot of land. I mean, I cannot complain about that if you consider that Drew already played three strip mines and a sinkhole. My mana situation is not too bad. I'm just not finding anything useful, it seems. Just having to pass turn again. And Drew is attacking again, so I'm going to two. And will we see something like a lightning bolt or a Psyblast? He is stepping his Birds of Paradise for a reason. And playing another set troll. Okay. Making matters worse for me. Deciding here to sack my Ruby, it seems. And I'm going to pay my Soul Ring mana to keep my Mox Ruby around. And that means my Soul Ring is out of the picture. Does that mean that I can finally do something here? Maybe Control Magic? No, I don't have two blue for Control Magic. So then I need to play out another blue here. Would be nice. But it looks like that's pretty much impossible here. Playing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm showing my hand. So control magic. I couldn't play. Fork was pretty useless. Uh, oh, I've got all that double blue in my hands. Oh, man. Oh, man. So I was really, really, really stuck. And I think, to be honest, Drew, you had complete control in this first game. I mean, there was no way for me. And I think playing that energy flux, yes, that was a mistake from my part. But I, even even if I wouldn't have played the energy flux, I, I believe you would have kept full control here. Uh, because you still would have had that Neverneurl's disc on the board the whole game that you didn't even need to use. So, well done here. This was game number one. Let's go to our sideboards. And I think I'm going to board in some shatters. 
and um, yeah then let's uh, let's take a look at game number two game number two and uh it's one up for my opponent drew here and that was just that was brutal man that that first game it was like i felt like i was i was stuck in the mud i couldn't everything that i wanted to play out kind of started to not do what it's supposed to do even after that that good start with the soul ring and, and mox ruby so so far drew your deck seems very strong uh, let's take a look at what I can do in this uh, in this second game. At least I can start. Hopefully that makes a, a difference. And looking at my hand here, it looks like we're both keeping... Oh, this, I mean, this is a bit of a suicide thing that I'm doing right here, playing out that Loa. I think already, in all honesty, I think this is already a mistake. And there's again the Strip Mines by Drew. Come on, man, give me a break. But um, I think I should have waited with the Loa, maybe just played nothing in my in my opening hand and just pass turn and then next turn go to 8, play the Loa, at least get an extra card even if he would have had that destruction. There we see a Batlands cracking the Lotus here. Do we see some more land removal? We see an Ancestral Recall, so he has two blue floating still. And it feels like it's already going to be difficult from here. Yeah, playing a Stone Rain, having that two mana floating of course from the Black Lotus. Finding a strip mine myself, stripping his Badlands. And not sure why this is taking so long. I mean, oh, I'm thinking about what I want to do. If I actually want to do it or maybe go for his blue source as well. Of course, I don't know what my hand is. Maybe this is the only land card I have. Okay, I'm deciding to strip. And then I pass turn. So, okay, so we're at, what, turn three, and there's nothing left on the board? So that's like your typical EC game. Let's take a look. Let's see what Drew can do here. Playing a Bayou. And passing turn. So at least there's no Birds of Paradise or something. So it could be worse. Playing a Mishra's Factory. And I really, I really think when, when you're playing against this, this Ponce deck, opening with a uh, Library of Alexandria, it's just not the best move. And there we see a Sinkhole, so taking care of my Mishra's Factory passing turn. And, oh, okay, playing another land. I guess this was my top deck, finding that Volcanic Island passing turn here. Because basically when you're playing against a deck like this, you know that your opponent is just, is just going to remove all your lands. So you need to really think about, am I playing this land now? Am I playing another land now? For example, if you would have a volcanic island and a basic land on your hand, then maybe it's better to first play the basic, then he removes the basic. And maybe with a little bit of luck, he runs out of land destruction and you can keep uh, your dual land. Now here we see another sinkhole. So... Uh, yeah, still, I'm still not able to get anything to stick on the battlefield here. Just passing turn here, I've lost a lot of lands already, and at a certain point, you're just going to stop drawing lands. I mean, that's how that's how simple it is. You just run out of lands, and and draw four nice dual lands here open. Probably going to play something out there. Not a set troll. I thought it was a set troll, but it's a surrender per free three four creature. And, and like I said in the introduction, I think it's even going to be difficult to just get two blue open, to just counter something. I haven't been able to counter a single spell, and this is already our second game. Taking a damage here from the Surrender, attacking for three. So that means another sinkhole. Oh my goodness. And, you know, the, the Scavenger Folk are actually... An important card here in this matchup because he can use scavenger folk now now that it's no longer a summoning sickness to just instantly remove any any mana stones that i might be trying to play out you know soul ring mox and whatever he can just instantly activate his um scavenger folk so to be in all honesty i mean he's got complete control so don't get me wrong but i don't think i would have attacked with the scavenger folk i think i just would have kept it untapped and just in in the weird case that i top deck a mox or something and play a mox and, and, and maybe even a mox and soaring then he can you know use his scavenger folk in response to that um of course it would still mean that i have some mana floating but still and having to discard that shatter that shatter that could have helped me in that first game so it looks like i've boarded in the shatters and boarded out the energy flux after that very bad experience for me in in game number one look at that attacking here for seven going down to six I mean, this deck is just brutal. Playing another Satch Troll. 
well, at least I'm, 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 at least I've got a land in the game. At least that's something, right? And that's okay. That's it already. That's it already. So Drew is showing me how much uh, cards he still had in his deck. I guess we're now discussing what we, what we've boarded in. The good news is we actually played a third game because I said, Drew, this game two was so ridiculously one-sided. I mean, we have we have to play game number three. That you guys deserve at least something of an even match somehow. So we played game number three. Let's see if I can at least get some permanence to stick in game number three. Game number three. And those first two games were brutal, brutal, brutal. I mean, I, I admit it, I, maybe I made a few small mistakes, but come on, Drew, your deck, it's brutal. Um, let's take a look, let's see what I can do now. At least I'm again on the play, uh, who knows, maybe I can get some permanence to stick. Finding a Library of Alexandria, again choosing to play it out in my first turn. I'm not sure if that's the best tactic against such a heavy land removal deck. Let me know in the description below what you think. At least it sticks for one more turn, so I get to draw that extra card from it. Playing a Strip Mine, Stripping his Bayou. At least that's a pretty good start for now. Maybe it can stick another turn. And then I at least have gotten two cards out of my Loa. Look at that slamming Scavenger Folk on the table here. And drawing extra cards here from my Library of Alexandria. It looks like I'm maybe looking for a red mana source and a lightning bolt to take care of that Scavenger Folk. Remember, Scavenger Folk is super annoying to play against, especially when you're playing with Mistress Factories like uh, like I am playing in this deck. So just playing a basic island. And does it mean that I'll have to discard? And it does mean I have to discard. Discarding that counter spell. And ah, oh, top decking. A strip mine, and here we really see the effect of having four strip mines in a meta. Uh, losing my library of Alexandria here, playing a Mistress Factory. And I just mentioned how annoying it is when you have a Mistress Factory in play and you're playing against the Scavenger Folk. Scavenger Folk having that ability for one green insect to destroy any artifact in play. So upon activation, he can activate his Scavenger Folk and take care of my Mistress Factory. And there we see a Birds of Paradise. And, um, hmm, what can I do? Playing another Mishra's Factory. Under, un, under normal circumstances, maybe that would have given me an opportunity to put some pressure on my opponent. But look at that Scavenger Folk. They're nicely untapped. So I first need to deal with the Scavenger Folk. And it looks like I'm thinking about playing something out. Maybe a Psyblast on the Scavenger Folk. Then again, I could always do that end step, so there's not really any need to, to do anything now. Passing turn here, Drew playing a Volcanic Island, having four mana available, maybe wanting to keep one mana untapped, tapping for two here and playing a Sinkhole. Gonna lose a Factory. And paying three, are we going to see that Psyblast? Playing a Psyblast, I think I have to go, yeah, I have to go here for the Scavenger Folk. I have to go for the Scavenger Folk. And in all honesty, I think I'm still pretty lucky that Drew chose to destroy my factory. Of course, I don't know what's in his hand. Now finding that second basic island, so with that knowledge, it, it, it was definitely the right thing to do for Drew. Not attacking with my factory, probably afraid of some other type of removal. And again, I wonder if that's the right decision. Playing an Ice Storm here. And there's a Counterspell. Yes, I managed to cast a Counterspell. I'm super happy. <laughs> yeah, Counterspell. I managed to blue. Yeah. Okay, there's a Volcanic Island tapping here for three. Will we see? Oh, this could be nice. I am. Ooh, there's possibility now. Playing a Blood Moon. That means that all his lands have now turned into basic mountains. Of course, he does have that double Birds of Paradise, so it's not the end of the world for Drew. But maybe it can hold him back a little bit. There we see a Nevenerals Disc. Now, I don't mind him using a Disc, actually, just to get rid of a single Blood Moon. I don't think he's going to, but I wouldn't mind. Of course, again, it depends on the cards that he has in hand. So remember, those, the Volcanic uh, Island and the Mistress Factory are now basic mountains. At least I'm able to play out something. So I'm actually pretty happy just looking at this matchup. Playing a Chain Lightning over one of the birds, probably. Of course, the untapped one. 
because the birds are now more important than ever giving him any color of mana? Or did I just change my mind? Uh, I guess I didn't, so it's kind of bolt the bird. It's chained the bird, but I'm just gonna count it as a bolt the bird moment. Bolt the bird, bolt the bird. And passing turn here. And we see, you know, Drew now has three basic mountains, but he still has that Birds of Paradise. Playing another Birds, okay. I wish I wish I had like a red hurricane. That doesn't exist, but still would be nice. And this kind of feels now that my Chain Lightning has been for nothing, which is not the greatest feeling. Um, what can I do? Tapping here, playing a control magic, that's interesting. Stealing his Birds of Paradise. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm really going on that anti bird strain here, trying to just make sure that he only has red mana. I mean, he can still, with red mana, he can still cast a card called Red Element of uh, Blue, uh, yeah, Red Elemental Blast. So he can still take care of the Control Magic, by the way. But okay, playing a City of Brass. And um, yeah, attacking again for one. I'm on 15. Paying three. Will we see a Stone Rain here? No, a Set Straw. Of course, he can play the Set Straw. It is a 2 2 because there are no swamps in the game. But still, it's it's an it's another creature, and and creatures deal damage, and I'm already on 15. So I have to say, at least this is a bit more of a game than the games that we've seen, um, the previous games that we've seen. At least I'm able to get some cards out. I've got some lands. I actually got a, quite a lot of land. And there it is, a blue elemental blast taking care of that set troll, and that's actually pretty. Go, oh, he can regenerate it because he has a Birds of Paradise. Ay 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 ay. Did I think about that? Maybe he's going to regenerate and in response I'm going to play another one. So he's going to regenerate. And playing a Wheel of Fortune. And having to throw away my Red Elemental Blast. So I guess I'm hoping to find another card to take care of that Satch Troll. Yes, and I found a Lightning Bolt. So that makes sense, because I already thought, why am I playing that blue Elemental Blast? But now it makes sense having that Wheel of Fortune in hand. Passing, going to pass a turn, probably. And uh, I like I like this match so far. At least this game has sees a little bit more interaction and, you know, has a little bit more going on than just uh, seeing how, how Drew... And Drew, I must say, you've built a, a great deck, beautiful deck. Um, well, beautiful, I don't know if beautiful is the right word. I think brutal is the better word, but a really brutal deck and it, it seems to be very efficient. But at least in this game number three, I have a little bit of a chance uh, to fight back. And remember, I still have a Birds of Paradise. Not sure how that's going to help me, but... Well, I guess in this case, it actually gives me that second blue mana to counter, so it's not too bad. Because remember, the Volcanic is a basic mountain. It looks like we're discussing a lot here in this matchup. Um, and he still, of course, has that disc that he can use. But is it really worth it for him to use that disc at this point? I don't think so. Again, it depends on his hand. If his hand is full of powerful spells that he cannot play because of that Blood Moon, then yeah, definitely use the disc. And okay, he's taking his turn, untapping all his permanents. Gonna draw for turn here, and the question is, is he going to use that disc? Maybe he's found more Birds of Paradise, who knows, then he doesn't have to use the disc. And tapping for two here. And he's using the birds. And what is he going to do? Will we see land destruction or Will we see perhaps a Surrendip? Oh, he keeps tapping more mana here. Tapping four now. Oh, this is brutal. A Tsunami, but there is a counter spell. And I mentioned that, that I can use that Birds of Paradise for that second blue source. And that counter spell, oh, that is so important. Oh, so the counter spell at least saves me because that would have been, that would have been pretty brutal. 
able to counter that tsunami that's a nice card coming in from the sideboard beautiful card and it looks like okay he's going to use the disc so he's going to explode the disc Interesting choice to do that on his end step, by the way, or at least at the end of his turn, because he's going to let me untap with everything, and he's completely tapped out. So I have a lot of mana. Of course, remember, my opponent has a full grip of cards, so... Oh, he didn't play out a land yet. Uh-oh. Oh! Oh, this is not good. Okay. I guess Drew did think about it, so he used the disc in his second main phase. Oh, look at this Ancestral Recall. And I think I've seen that Ancestral Recall every single game. So also in game three, we see the Ancestral Recall again making an appearance here. And uh, that looks like a Mox Ruby that has some experience on the field. And he's passing turn here. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was so I was so optimistic. Oh, he's tapped out. He's passing turn. No, he's not tapped out, man. He's playing three Mox and then dual and ancestral recall and a chaos orb. Anyway, back to the matchup, back to the game. I'm attacking now with a Mishra's factory. Having that second Mishra for a pump if necessary. Let's see if he wants to use his Chaos Orb. It looks like he he does. Activating his Chaos Orb. Let's get ready for the flip. Obviously put it here. Let's put it in slow-mo. There we go. Nice slow-mo. And there we see his orb. There it goes. Oh, I think it didn't hit. No, 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 no. It did not hit. So that means three damage here to Drew. And at least, okay, that's good. Well, is it three? I mean, yeah, I'm going to pump it here. Dealing three damage. And passing turn here. Let's hope I have some kind of counter magic to, you know, Keeping control of this game. Because he's got a lot of land here now. And he still has some nice cards in, in hand. Well, I don't know if they're nice, but he has some spells. So let's see. At least he's already played the Ancestral Recall. That's something. And I have Counter Magic up. Not sure if I have it in hand, of course. Tapping for two here. Do, are we going to see a Sinkhole? Okay, not a Demonic Tutor. Sinkhole on one of my factories. Taking two damage from his City of Brass, tapping his Mox. Tapping another, tapping five. Oh! Yes! At least I'm able to counter Mind Twist. Taking a Time Walk here. Ay, 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 ay. And just a lot of powerful spells here from Drew. And now I don't have the double blue to protect me anymore, but of course I had to counter that Mind Twist. And it's really difficult to play against this deck. And, uh, yeah, he's going to take take his turn. Okay, you know, take your time, sort your cards, no worry. I think maybe we're talking a little bit about, like, that I cannot see all of his cards. Uh, anyway, so he's drawing, he's drawing a card now. Um, let's see what he can find from the top of his deck. And uh, maybe it's interesting to know that usually, I mean, all these games are, you know, very friendly, very casual. This is, you know, the old school scene is very laid back. So we just have a lot of, of BS talk in between. Um, and there we see a Setch Troll coming, coming onto the battlefield here. And that's going to be a difficult Setch Troll to get rid of, actually. Because he is so, he has so many. Oh, and a Wheel of Fortune. I am liking this. This is pretty cool. Again, a Wheel of Fortune. And what I wanted to say is because he has so much mana, he will always have a black source to regenerate his set troll. So I think the best thing for me to do is just to play a bigger creature. I do have those Surrendip uh, Freets. I haven't, I haven't seen them, actually. In the entire matchup, I don't believe I've played a single Surrendip Freet in these three games so far. I mean, I, I have to find at least one, right? There's a Strip Mine taking care of my Volcanic Island. Let's see what else he can do. And playing a Birds of Paradise here. Passing turn. Finding a Volcanic Island. Finding a Mox Sapphire. A Brain Geyser would be nice. Tapping three. Yay, Surrender Perfreed. I found one. And uh, 
That means at least I have a blocker for that Sedge Troll, and next turn I can start dealing some damage here if he cannot get rid of it. Having two blue open as well to counter is pretty nice. And remember, I do play counter burn, so I have a lot of direct damage in my deck. So that should start working in my advantage as well. As soon as he's low enough, I can start just playing my side blasts, lightning bolts on his um, on his life total. Now let's see what Drew can do here. And at least in his third game, I'm able to put some pressure on Drew. There is another strip mine, and again, losing my Volcanic Island. That means I've just lost my own only red mana source. Not doing anything in response, so I guess I don't have a Lightning Bolt in hand. Tapping three here. And playing an Ice Storm. Haven't seen a lot of Ice Storms. So playing an Ice Storm. A lot of beautiful black bordered cards in the deck of Drew, by the way. It's really nice to see. Look at all those black border duels, beautiful. And tapping for three more, will we see another land destruction spell? Now let's wait, choosing to, oh, I'm playing his own Surrender Pafrit. And playing a side blast on the Surrender Pafrit, so taking care of it immediately. I want to dominate the air, going to 12 here, of course. And playing a City of Brass, so that gives me access to red mana again, attacking him here, going to 12. So we're both on 12 here, passing turn, but he can hit me now with his Setch, taking me down to 9. But he's getting a little bit light on cards. I'm hoping to find my Brain Geyser. And tapping 3 here, a Stone Rain, probably going to take my City of Brass. At least that's what I would, would do. Um, it's my only source. Tapping for one, taking a damage, going to 11. Does that mean I have a lightning bolt in hand? Not doing anything with that mana yet. Yes, playing a lightning bolt, that makes sense. Directly on Drew's life total, so that means he goes down to nine. He can attack me, bring me to 8, and with the damage from the Surrender, I will go to 7. And if he can play another... Oh, he plays another creature. This is a big problem for me, unfortunately. So I'm on 7. I need a Control Magic now. That would be nice. Because a Control Magic could end save me. Okay, tapping 5, tapping 6. Playing a Brain Geyser. Okay, this is pretty nice. Maybe I can get back into this game. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Fingers crossed here. I'm drawing four cards, but I have to wait an entire turn. And remember, he can attack with both of his set trolls. So that means I'll drop to four. Taking a damage it means I'll drop to three. I mean, this is, in Dutch we say, Kantje Bakboord. This is going to be really, really difficult for me. Untapping, going to three life here. Can I find something? I'm hoping to find a control magic. Or a lot of direct damage. I cannot find playing another surrender, at least being able to, to block both of those Sedge Trolls, but that does mean a lot of damage for me. That would mean I'm going to one if the situation stays the same. So I have one more turn to try to win this one. Oh, this is interesting. Playing, I believe that's a Nether Void. One left, of course, Nether Void goes really well with uh, the tactic of taking uh, destroying all the lands. Attacking your chum blocking for one, going to six. Cannot play a side blast because it's going to kill myself. It's not even going to kill Drew here. I think, Drew, I think you've won. I think you've won again. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. And I'm just pointing out that a card like Fork is pretty useless against his deck just because I need double red. Oh my, oh man, <laughs> I was so close, I was so close, oh man, Drew, really man, compliments uh, to your brew, I really, really like it, uh, well, like, I, I don't like, I don't like it, but I think it's really strong, it's well thought of, the idea of combining 
two of these pretty good uh, tactics of two of the Panzer deck and the Troll Disco deck and, and making it one whole, making it work together. I think it's, uh, it's very competitive and uh, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun playing this deck in the future and I'm curious to hear from from you guys from the viewers especially the viewers that are playing Eternal Central do you think that this deck can hold up competitively in the Eternal Central uh, scene you know um, I know very little about Eternal Central I play it from time to time uh, but as you as you probably know I play other formats uh, more and more often so let me know what you think of this brew uh, Drew thank you very much for your time for playing this uh, this deck on the channel. Now, if you're watching this video and if you have an original deck and you'd like to play against me, just send me a message. Um, you can check check. You can find me on Instagram. Send me a message on Instagram, and I'll try to I'll try to reply. Um, anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and if you'd like to support the channel then simply keep watching the videos like you're doing right now you can also like it leave a comment every little thing help helps click that notification button that helps a lot as well and we also have a patreon page so there's probably an information card for my patreon popping up right now where you can support the show and as a matter of fact talking about people that support the show let's take a look at the end scroll with all the patrons of timmy talks Ik het als fikker te samba kazik.